So I found that there are many inconsistencies, uh, I mean, what, what is actually happening and what is actually in the, on the paper. Uh, beside this, I just conducted, uh, I was actually, many of my friends uh, who presented and they talked much about the, the statistics and the trade trends and all the things. Uh, my focus is just on the cross-border issue and the, the trade potential in Pakistan. Actually, uh, when I see to Pakistan, then Pakistan, most of the time, we always talk about manufacturing sector and all these things. But Pakistan is in, has in, inherent trade potential, trade potential for its neighbor, neighboring countries. Like say, Afghanistan uh, is a kind, Pakistan is a kind of lifeline trade route <laughs> for Afghanistan. And there is, beyond Afghanistan, there is a Central Asian countries. And all those Central, Central Asian countries are actually, it depends on the route which actually provided by Pakistan. Similarly, we have Iran and we have uh, China, we have India. So we are actually at the center of the countries which are producing a, a, which is a kind of world factory, who are producing goods for the whole world. China is, a, has a huge market share of the of global market share. Uh, India is on the same path. So both countries uh, have many competitive advantages if we compare it with Pakistan. So my, uh, uh, actually it comes in my mind that instead we, uh, I talk on uh, manufacturing and all the things which are uh, very important for trading, uh, I prefer to talk something on the cross-border trade issues and the challenges we are facing. Uh, here I just want to uh, have an overview of two things. One is the drivers of import and export costs, which, which, which are important. And second is issue that hampers Pakistan integration into regional and global market and Pakistan trade with Afghanistan and Central Asia just as a case study to understand what, is, what actually is happening. So we can, uh, if we understand the case of uh, the, the trade with these two, three countries, so we can get an insight that what our future trade policy should reflect. Uh, there are the main opportunities which are actually Pakistan is enjoying that it lies at the trade hub of Afghanistan, Iran, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, India and China. It constitutes almost 4.8 billion people living in these countries out of 7.2 billion population, global population. So in that way Pakistan actually uh, but but if you look at the trade what actually is happening on the ground that is 15 percent of the whole pakistan trade are export import is with the south asian countries in which 57 percent is with the afghanistan uh, so here the policy gaps which actually uh, exist is the uh, in pakistan trade policy is the export product concentration uh, the cross-border trade and another thing which is, uh, I mean, highlighted in the, the, in the previous policy, uh, trade policy, the transformation of Pakistan from efficiency to innovation driven economy. So it's another huge uh, kind of uh, uh, challenge for Pakistan. Uh, I was just looking for uh, some data and uh, the, the innovation driven related economic data and I found that India is actually exporting over 100 billion dollar software to the whole world and its economic size of the Indian uh, software industry is 160 billion dollar. Now we are actually we stands. Our export is I think less than 200 million dollar. So, uh, so this is so low we cannot uh, I mean go towards uh, we cannot move towards innovation driven economy without enabling few things which can help us to move from the efficiency to economic driven uh, economy. Now the thing is the Afghan transit trade in bilateral trade we can compare it with the India and because of and now in the new Afghan transit trade which is signed in 2010 India is also partner in that, uh, that uh, agreement and uh, we haven't uh, that much trade with Iran and with China we have a lot of uh, a huge trade but their trade is actually uh, more with the China, it is more import than export. With India, I was reading Indian trade, import from India is three times than the export we are, I mean, exporting to India. So that kind of relationship is not that much beneficial for us. 
if you look at Afghanistan, so the first agreement was signed, but that that uh, uh, trade with, with India is much, with Afghanistan is is tilted towards much more favorably to our side rather than to the uh, Afghanistan. So the first EFTA was signed in 1965 and served the purpose for five decades. The revised EFTA signed in 2010. After the new agreement, the trade volume between two countries had dropped to its lowest ebb and continues to decline. Now this is a kind of, uh, I mean, our total, you, you can see that our total trade size, our business uh, export volume is not that much, but you can see that our uh, export, our trade declined from $3 billion to $2.5 billion, $500 million. So it is a huge uh, decline in the trade. Now, the problems which is actually, now the, here is another uh, important issue and uh, I, uh, before coming to this uh, presentation, I dis I, a few days back I discussed with the traders in the Chamber of Commerce, so they told me two main issues which are actually related with the trade with, uh, I mean related to the overall trade policy, but its impact on the Afghanistan trade. Or, uh, trade. Pakistan has, uh, has uh, uh, levied import duties, regulatory duties just to discourage imports. Now, from Afghanistan side, we have a very low imports and a very huge export. Uh, so if we compare it with the, so it's almost 10 to 15 percent import from Afghanistan, while our size is much more higher than the import from Afghanistan. Now the problem is, when the regulatory duties are levied on the import from Afghanistan, so what actually Afghanistan government did? They also levied the same restrictions, so which resulted in, a, in an abrupt decline of our export towards Afghanistan. So this is actually a kind of a problem because if we want to discourage import from rest of countries, then we can, uh, it will uh, directly affect our exports to Afghanistan. So this is actually, now the issues we, which I uh, realized there, that the two issues, the time and cost, due to prolonged cumbersome bureaucratic procedures, the cost, unjustified charges, shipping cost, NLC, custom, and end call for informal charges by law enforcement agencies. Now the problem which, were, which I found there, that overcharging of shipping companies, different tar tariff regimes, prolonged procedure of rectification, lack of security to bonded carriers, dysfunctional trackers, and so many other issues which surfaced. Now you can see that the, in 2010, the trade declined from 2.5 to 500 million. The trade is gradually but rapidly shifting from Pakistan to Iran, India, and China. Now what actually happening with us, that our trade from Afghanistan is moving towards Iran and from then, so it has consequences for two trades. One is with the China, one is with the India, and second is, is with the Afghanistan. Uh, again, uh, Afghanistan government is not interested in Pakistan to uh, uh, have any kind of relationship because they have now an alternative route through Chahabahar and India wants to link its trade channel through Waga and Atari border bypassing and overriding Pakistani trade communities. Yeah. Due to the annexation of Pak railway and NLC are causing reduction in trade volume between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So now the thing is the factors which actually the, the main contributor towards the decline in trade is the trust deficit, the political trust deficit because the issue we are facing in Pakistan is not with economic policy or with trade policy, it is much more the political issues the political problem, which I mean the political economy, which actually we are suffering. So the, pre the another issue, the prevailing security issue in Afghanistan, the uncertain policies which are facing, which are actually by Pakistan and the Afghan government is uh, reciprocating with the same uh, policies. Uh, the border closure is a counter reaction in the wake of security or terrorist incident and unnecessary in how to get the documentation for visa from trader of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, another thing is that shipping agencies, because the trade was shifted from a railway line towards private companies and the private companies are charging much higher than the, the railway, so it, it contributed towards net losses to Pakistan Railway and also the traders are now paying much more higher than the 
uh, railway. So this is another issue, and you can see the uh, I mean the the charges, the money they are giving actually to those companies. Uh, uh, another issue you can see that the previous shipping companies carried out a rectification in documentation. So one small thing needs a lot of days to rectify all these uh, uh, issues. So it it. Uh, needs a lot of time to to uh, operate between two borders, Karachi and two ports, Karachi and uh, Afghanistan. It also very costly. Another issue is the bonded carrier, which I which I have already mentioned that uh, because of the Pakistan railways not now in the trade, it is the bonded carrier, the private companies, and these uh, agreement is actually uh, it is uh, uh, developed by US, United States of America when they came in 2001 to Afghanistan, so actually they developed their own uh, 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 trade agreement between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So this is actually the charges which are being levied by different organization, by different uh, NLC is charging 2,500 2, rupees without any reason from every uh, Trackers are uh, on the on different uh, these uh, shipping carriers, so it is another issue which are being faced by. Now the thing is, how can we improve the situation? The the recommendation, the the demands of the people. We, when I met with the chamber people, they want to revive the EPTA, Pakistan Afghanistan trade agreement. They they need revival. Because there are many issues, they want the 1965 agreement back instead of the new agreement 2010. Now, how can we revive the Afghanistan charges? This is a very huge challenge in front of uh, Pakistan, but it can it can improve it uh, by uh, I mean now you can see that that uh, cement export the Afghan government now they have banned ex cement export from Pakistan. And this is, a, I mean, a huge setback. Many uh, agricultural products, now they are not allowed to enter into Afghanistan. So actually it is uh, contributing towards poverty in the, in the region, in the bordering region. Uh, we can facilitate Afghanistan, Pakistan can facilitate Afghanistan to offer them to join CPEC. So it would be a kind of uh, incentive to them and they can integrate uh, with Pakistan, but we, should as a, I mean, my suggestion is that we shouldn't think Afghanistan is a lone country because Afghanistan demands access to India, and India India wants access to Afghanistan and Central Asia because it is it is the shortest route. So the Pakistan trade we can have we can multiply many times the existing trade. I mean, if you have 20 billion dollar export, we can go up even to 100 billion dollar because we have two countries, uh, a, a huge region, Central Asia at our uh, at, at our that border. Uh, now, my uh, uh, recommendation is, uh, which I actually read from this uh, this study, which I can this short study which I conducted, that effective to look, effective trade policy should provide concrete measures in three main areas. First is lower the transaction cost of trades, increase competitiveness in world market as a tool of economic growth and poverty reduction and minimize cross-border trade hurdles. Uh, we can link, we, we must link academia industry to foster innovation-driven economy. As I said that uh, uh, software is a, is a huge uh, opportunity for Pakistani organization, Pakistani universities, and they can tap the, uh, the potential. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, reviewing, looking at the cost of the software development in Pakistan and India, so the, the cost of software development is much higher than Pakistan. So the, the, the developer can come to Pakistan if you provide, if you develop academic and industry linkages. Uh, another issue is the separating politics and trade because it is very hard to achieve in Pakistani context. We have many trade issues, but we have Chinese international trade model. We can follow it because China is uh, selling their goods to many countries and they have conflict with those countries. So we must follow that because if we think that we have trade issues, we have border conflict with our bordering countries, with Iran, I mean we are waiting for, for the last 5-10 years that their gas will come. Another is the CASA, 
uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. These we want to connect those countries, but from the la from so many years we are waiting. So we need to separate politics and trade in our security. We need to dissolve our security issues. Besides regulatory uh, uh, hurdles, including trade measures, and the most important is that Pakistan need to develop an entrepreneurial ecosystem, and that is <coughs> focusing on improving intellectual property rights. Pakistan is at 125 among 150 countries in intellectual property rights, while India is, is at 52. Now we can compare that pa India is at 52 and Pakistan is on 100. Now it's our worst situation. Even Bangladesh is performing well in many places. So if the intellectual property rights are not secure, so how can we expect that we have a good software uh, development and software companies? Another is the institutional support. And the last point, which actually I want to emphasize, is that we need an integrated, holistic approach toward development of national trade. Because things are happening, and there is no coordination, no integration. There is one policy for manufacturing, another is for, say, uh, trade, another is there is a uh, import substitution. So nothing is actually integrated. There is no connection among those different policies. So we need actually a dire need of integrated holistic approach to develop our national trade and that that is very important thank you very much